thousands of good, loyal Americans have been duped into actually aiding the communists. There was this ferment which plays in yet again to this recurring theme that there is some force, foreigners, powerful people, rich people, who are trying to undo the America that is most familiar and most beloved to those who are listening to the conspiracy theories. Joseph R. McCarthy, the junior senator from Wisconsin. He was obscure in the halls where senators advise and consent until February the 9th, 1950. Even if there are only one communist in the State Department, there could still be one communist, too many. Joe McCarthy gives a speech saying he has the names of 205 communists in the Department of State. That discovery propelled him into the headlines. There is no remote possibility of this war which we're in today ending except by victory or by death for this civilization. He then starts this campaign executed in the Senate through different committees, but mainly in the newspapers. McCarthy understood that headlines spoke louder than details. He would have loved Twitter. He is the master of making the sensational charge, often with very little basis to it, and the press amplifies it. And here is our guest, Senator Joseph R. McCarthy. If you had to do this all over again, would you have changed any of your tactics? I'm not uh, equipped to use lace handkerchief type of tactics. Uh, we may have to use lumberjack tactics, bare knuckle tactics. If those are the only kind of tactics the communists understand, then those are the tactics we'll use. There's an enormous number of lives that were wrecked because of these charges. Senator McCarthy's charges and insinuations are not only false, but utterly irresponsible, and under the circumstances, reveal a shocking disregard for the interests of our country. McCarthy, his own lawyer, Roy Cohn, said, was an opportunist. He wasn't really interested in the end of fighting communism. He was interested in the means of fighting communism because the means made him more popular, made him more powerful. McCarthy's political base was a source of fear, particularly for other Republican senators. McCarthy gave the impression that he was leading this vast army his other fellow senators weren't sure how big that army was. But if it was big, they sure as hell didn't want to run afoul of it. Acclaimed as an anti-communist hero and denounced as a threat to civil liberties for his conduct of Senate investigations, Joseph R. McCarthy became the most controversial political figure of the period. There was a huge amount of debate during the McCarthy era about whether a journalistic institution should simply report what was said without assessing its validity. It's the same kind of debate that goes on today. Just because someone in power says something crazy, do you have to report what that is? If you report it, do you say it's crazy? Or does that somehow violate the neutrality of the news? So in the midst of the McCarthy scare, Palmer Hoyt, who's the editor and publisher of the Denver Post, issued a statement saying, we're no longer simply going to report what Joe McCarthy says unless we can confirm it. Hoyt's view was widely discussed, huge debates in newsrooms about what to do. Tonight, See It Now devotes its entire half hour to a report on Senator Joseph R. McCarthy, told mainly in his own words and pictures. Did the Civil Liberties Union supply you with an attorney? They did supply an attorney. Edward R. Murrow's program would say, the senator has said this, but he has no evidence. You know, the Civil Liberties Union has been listed as a front for and doing the work of the Communist Party. The Attorney General's list does not and has never listed the ACLU as subversive, nor does the FBI or any other federal government agency. I think when Palmer Hoyt, when Edward R. Murrow said, this is what we think the truth is, they were living up to the best tradition of those better angels. The line between investigating and persecuting is a very fine one, and the junior senator from Wisconsin has stepped over it repeatedly. This is no time for men who oppose Senator McCarthy's methods to keep silent, or for those who approve. We can deny our heritage and our history, but we cannot escape responsibility for the result. 